Okay guys, I've got a problem with my hydraulics on my John Deere 1025R. I've noticed for the last couple of days, or last couple of uses, maybe three or four uses, the hydraulics haven't felt right. Um, I didn't feel like it was lifting my tiller as high as it should. So first I looked at adjustments and looked at the mechanical stuff. Couldn't find anything wrong. I do have a problem with the lever it is a little stiff to raise the to raise it. Um, so I gotta check that out too. But right now it got to where the hydraulics just really felt funny. Like it wasn't lifting the mowing deck high enough. Um, I, I like I said I noticed it first on the tiller, but with the tiller it was lifting it off the ground, and I wasn't sure that it wasn't just mechanical. So I hadn't had the mowing deck on it in a while. I'd been doing my mowing with my smaller John Deere mower and uh, had a field to mow. So I put the mowing deck on it and it definitely was not lifting the mowing deck high enough. Um, it was lifting it to probably about what I would call my low setting, um, which is uh, just enough to you do your yard with. But when I mow my field, I like to mow the field at a higher level. It helps control weeds. So... Let's take a look. I'll show you what I found. Um, and this is owner error. This is uh, more my fault than anything. Uh, and it's come from leaving the tractor sitting outside. Uh, and it's just because, as you can see behind me, my building is full. Um, I'm going to make another spot for the tractor. But for now, it's going to go back inside after this. I didn't want to leave it outside, but I've had to. But something's going to have to go in the garbage because tractor, I can't have this problem. I got I rely on this tractor. And I'm sure you all rely on your tractors. Um, so I need it to work when I need it. I don't need to have problems out of it. And uh, like I said, leaving it outside is what's caused this issue. And I bet some of you have already guessed what I've got going on. So let's take a look. So here's my little 1025 r It's the workhorse around here. I've got an old Ford 2000 series, great tractor, but man, this baby gets all the work. So here's your fill plug, where you fill your fill it up at, and when you pull that off, you want to make sure you get this clean around here. Um, it builds up a lot of debris. But over here, we have our dipstick. So I pulled the dipstick out this morning. Let's see if we can get this thing to focus. Looky there. That's milky. So milky means we got water in the hydraulic fluid. Obviously, that's a no-no. Obviously, you never want water in your hydraulics. That is a good way to damage your tractor. So I'm going to drain this. Now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to clean the sc screen right now, but I am going to clean the screen in about a week. So I've got enough fluid on hand to service this one time. So I'm going to drain it, I'm going to refill it, and then I'm going to run it for about a week. Take it be about a week and two days because I'll do it next weekend. We'll run it for about a week, and uh, then I'm going to change the fluid again, clean the screen, and finish this job up. So this will be part one of this video, and this will be to get the water out, at least the majority of it. The new fluid will transfer through the system and get the rest of it out of the loader and everywhere that it is. So let's take care of this problem. Okay, guys, I am going to try to get you down here where you can see what I'm doing. we go so right here's the bottom of your case we're at the back of the tractor and right here is the drain plug see it right there so it's a 13 millimeter I believe if I remember right and it is so I've got a long wrench you don't got to have a long one but I've got a long wrench here so we're gonna put a wrench on it Break it loose. Now we're gonna get our drain pin back under it.
this drain pan's got a catch for the drain plug so you don't lose it down in it. I've got several drain pans. Oh yeah, make sure this thing holds 13 quarts. And I've got about a half, probably a half a quart of water in here. So see, that's water. So make sure you got a drain pan that's big enough. I've got a small one that holds like seven quarts, eight quarts. That would not cut it. Oh yeah. And you want to open your vent. <laughs> Thin oil. It's not like motor oil. Uh, motor oil drains down a little faster. That's what you don't want to see coming out of your tractor, guys. Definitely not what you want to see. We're going to hope no damage has been done. Obviously, I have no idea how long I run this before it started causing an issue. But all I can do is drain it and refill it. And then, like I said, we'll use the new fluid to flush the system. And then we'll do this again to make sure that we get it all taken care of. I'll have to go buy John Deere and pick me up about four more gallons of fluid. I don't bother with getting a little quart. I know it holds 13, that makes life easy. I keep an extra quart jug around and I, I fill that up with the, out of the gallons. That way I got that quart measured accurately instead of trying to guess pouring it out of the extra gallon. But it also leaves me a little bit of extra fluid around And it ain't like I'm going to quit servicing this transmission today. This ain't the last time this thing gets serviced. I service this thing about once a year. No more than every two. Uh, at this point, though, I'm using it more, so it's probably going to be once a year. So, takes a little while for it all to drain out. And you want to just give it time. You don't want to rush this. We don't want to leave dirty fluid in there um, that's why i didn't try putting the rear tires up on something because i want everything to drain out and this can be done just like this now you can drive the whole tractor up on six by sixes you can make your ramp system but you want to be super careful with what you do. I would advise multiple layers of 2x12s if you're going to drive it up on a makeshift ramp. Now, I'm not recommending that because obviously there's some safety that comes in there when you do that. So guys, the moral of this story is keep an eye on your tractor. Don't park your equipment outside. Make room for it inside. Figure out something. At very least, if you got to park it outside, put a heavy tarp over it to keep water off the stuff that it don't need to be on. And like I said, I knew this didn't need to be outside. It just was circumstances. We closed our automotive repair business last year. Uh, right about this time, we started moving everything. And uh, the building that I parked the tractor in, turned into storage for some of the stuff that I brought from the shop. So I had to have somewhere to put glass beaters and brake lays and um, wheel balancers and tire machines and toolboxes and uh, I've got it stored all over the place. We're finally getting to the point we can start fine tuning that. Um, you can follow me along for that build. We're going to be turning part of the barn, I hope, into a workshop. That's the game plan here. But let's get back to our John Deere. I'll bring you back in just a second when things uh, stop. So while that's finishing draining, I'm going to take a few moments to get a few things prepped up here. I'm getting my transmission hydraulic fluid ready. And I'm going to clean around that uh, fill hole, the fill plug, the vent. So keep some brake parts cleaner on hand always because you never know when you're going to need it. And, in case you don't know, 
this is what you need low viscosity high guard transmission hydraulic oil and like I said I just buy the gallons TY 22,000 now if I did buy a quart one time and I keep this to refill so this is the quart bottle as you see low viscosity high guard transmission hydraulic oil same stuff and it's a TY 22035 John Deere and I keep this like I said simply for ease of measurement here so let's get down here around this fill plug and I've done cleaned up a rag, but we're going to wash it. A little bit of added security force. You know, we, we don't want no trouble out of our transmission, so no trash. So here we go. By now that fluid should be done, done. So we're gonna go back down and stick the drain plug in. Yep, see I even got a little bit of moisture there. We'll wipe that off on a rag. Good deal. Now I want to clean my funnel out. Okay, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Broke my camera stand. We got a new one ordered. Guys, I'm going to pour this in without you watching. I couldn't do you that way. It's too satisfying. Now this is the last of it. Little funnel just makes it easier. I've done it without it when I didn't have a funnel handy. Okay guys, now it's gonna be the moment of truth. Now, we got to get a funnel out of there. Lay it to the side. We'll wipe off. Now, I'm not gonna do a lot of wipe, I'm doing more blotting than wiping. Cause I don't wanna wipe no dirt into the hole. These things can be a little tricky where it's plastic threads going into metal, but if you play with it just a minute. Okay. Now, I gotta put my quart jug back up. If I don't, I won't have it for next time. Fingers crossed. Let's get her in neutral. Make sure my throttle's at idle. Raising up now. What we wanted. We'll make sure we ain't got no leaks. And we don't. We'll put the plug on the drain plug so cats don't get into it. Now we'll just slide this out of the way for now. So 
okay guys this will be part one of this uh, make sure you like and subscribe we got another video on the John Deere um, but like and subscribe for part two I'll show you how to change the fluid again I'll show you that it should look much better next time and we're going to change that screen now we got another video coming up on a John Deere it's a different type of John Deere I have got a XUV 590E that is time for its 200 hour service so ah, we'll see what that entails alright guys I hope you've enjoyed this video like I said be sure to like and subscribe uh, give me a thumbs up if you had similar problems comment below and we thank you for watching